I'm Dr. Melanie Windridge, a physicist and mountaineer. I'm climbing Everest and I want to highlight the science that gets us to the summit. At Everest Base Camp, the thwop thwop of helicopters is a familiar sound. Sometimes they are so loud and so close that you feel they're going to land in your tent. Not only do helicopters now bring supplies into base camp, they are also used to evacuate sick climbers and sometimes for rescues higher up the mountain. But there are limits, and while the possibility of helicopter rescue provides a safety net of sorts, it cannot be relied upon, particularly higher up. To find out more about helicopter performance at altitude, I'm here at number four Hamilton Place, the headquarters of the Royal Aeronautical Society. I'm going to talk to Sophie Robinson from Copter Group about how helicopters work. Hello Sophie. Hi Molly. <laughs> nice to meet you. When were helicopters invented? So the first practical helicopter was invented in the early 1920s by Igor Sikorsky. Development leading up to the helicopter was taking place a lot around the time of the First World War. Why are helicopters useful in places like Everest? The main reason that they're useful in these kind of places is that you don't require all of the infrastructure that you would require for a conventional fixed-wing aircraft. So you don't need a runway that is however many kilometres long in order for your aircraft to land. As long as there are no kind of big obstructions, you can land pretty much anywhere. It also allows you to extract, say, if you're on Everest, someone who has cerebral edema that desperately needs to go to hospital, they can be extracted in minutes. It's a very quick method of rescuing someone and you can rescue them from where they are. Can you tell us a bit about how helicopters fly and why it's difficult for them to fly at altitude? It's probably easiest if we start with a conventional aeroplane. We have four main forces acting on the aircraft. You have the thrust acting in the forward direction, the drag acting backwards. You then have the weight, which acts in the downward direction, and the lift generated by the wings, which acts in the upward direction. The way a plane, a conventional aeroplane works is the thrust from the engine pulls the aircraft through the air, and then the air flowing over the wings generates lift, and that, when the lift is greater than the weight, that's when you can fly. The helicopter is a little bit different from that. The same four forces act on the helicopter. So we have the weight in the downward direction and the lift in the upward direction. The drag still acts in the backwards direction. And then in order to generate the thrust in the forward direction, you have to tilt the rotor and then you'll be able to move forwards. In terms of flying at altitude, there are maybe three or four main concerns. The engine, that's normally the thing which physically limits your performance. So the engine sucks in the air, compresses it, we mix it, mix the fuel and the compressed air together, then you ignite it and it blows it out the back of the engine and that's how you generate your forward momentum through the air. As you get higher and higher in uh, the atmosphere, there's less and less air available. So the air becomes less dense, there's less mass there. So eventually you'll get to the point where an engine cannot compress the air enough to generate any forward momentum. So your engine will limit your performance. Similarly, as the air gets less and less dense, your main rotor is not able to produce enough lift to overcome the weight of the aircraft to keep you in the air. So as the rotor is rotating, it disturbs the air and changes the direction. So according to Newton's law, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So your rotor acts on the air to change the direction into the downward direction. The reaction to that is the lift. The amount of lift you produce is directly proportional to the air density. So if you're moving a smaller and smaller amount of air, the amount of lift you're gonna produce is gonna be a lot less. And eventually you'll get to the point where your rotor is not able to move enough air to keep you flying. The third concern is the weight of the aircraft. So the heavier you are, the larger the lift force you will need. Now, helicopters are quite complicated things. So if you are trying to make your aircraft lighter and lighter by removing 
all the excess weight you can think of. You can take all the seats out and all of like the fancy padding in the back and all of that sort of stuff, but there's always gonna be quite a considerable amount of weight that you need to keep in the air. The weight of the helicopter is also one of the main problems. So the higher you go, it's just much more difficult to fly because of the lack of the power, yes. the lack of the lift, and the weight pulling and, it down. Yes, the absolute weight. The other final consideration that we have to make is for the pilot. So as you probably experienced <laughs> at high altitude, when you're maybe slightly hypoxic, your brain doesn't have enough oxygen, it's quite difficult to even do basic things like tie your shoelaces. So imagine trying to fly a helicopter, which is quite a difficult <laughs> task, uh, even when you're at sea level. You know, there's a lot going on in the cockpit. You've got three different controls that you need to manage. You're maybe also trying to navigate. You're maybe also trying to talk to your co-pilot, trying to use the radio. So there's a, there's a physical human limit as well. Obviously, you could put an oxygen system into your aircraft. So the pilot can wear a mask and they can breathe pure oxygen like they would at sea level. However, that then makes your aircraft heavier. So you're kind of countering one problem, but making a problem in another area. On the mountain, we saw a number of helicopter evacuations from Camp 2 at around 6,500 metres. Whilst helicopters have occasionally flown higher, this is currently about the limit for regular flights and is a dangerous undertaking. So do you think that there are advances that could be coming in the future that might increase the limit, make, be able to make helicopters fly higher? Yeah, so we are forever improving engine technology, so engines becoming much, much lighter thanks to uh, new materials being introduced. Um, the same goes for kind of the structure of the aircraft as well. So increased use of things like carbon fiber um, and lighter, more advanced materials that will, again, reduce the weight of the helicopter. But also lots of new manufacturing techniques. We're able to design and manufacture parts which are of equivalent performance, but much lighter. So in an engine, for example, the, the blades and the compressor, we now grow them as a single crystal. So they're very strong, but very light. Um, at the same time. So there are those kind of advances as well that are helping to make things lighter. So reducing weight can actually be key to flying higher. Mm, definitely, yeah. yes. Helicopters on Everest aren't only used for rescue. At the end of a gruelling expedition, they can provide a quicker way home for weary climbers than the traditional walkout. After seven weeks on the mountain, and just two days after standing on the summit of Mount Everest, I took my first ever helicopter ride back to the real world. <laughs>